Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm John P. On today's episode of Geek Beat, a printer that eats your paper. We have a live demo of an awesome new product. <laughs> Steve Ballmer retires and Microsoft stock goes through the roof. Aliens do indeed exist. And there are no robot segments on this year episode of Geek Beat Live. to Geek Beat Live. You look like you were about to say, you you got <laughs> caught. You were well, about to say something and you got caught. You are like, hey, I, did you know? Welcome to Geek Beat I Live, know people. That, that is because I was about to ask you. I was hoping maybe I had time to steal one of those cupcakes over there before the show started. But I don't know why you're hogging them. They're way over there. I didn't even look have the chance at to reach these. them. these. Lynn brought some cupcakes. Let's open it up. These, these things are, are from, amazing. These are from... Uh, oh, okay. Tr tr Yikes. What's it called? Trailer cakes? Trailer cakes? Trailer this cakes. This is a actually Here, a open local. It. They can't see through this that. This is a local shop, Trailer Cakes, and uh, they specialize in making all these cute little cupcakes. There's like, a red one with white icing on that's it. That's red velvet with, uh, yeah, and then there's one with pretzel on it. That one looks like it has Oreo, Oreo, it looks Oreo like ice cream, yeah. Oreo cream topping. That would be frosting. Is that that's what that's carrot? called, John. Is that a carrot? Is that it like is? carrot cake? To oh, hey, here comes hey, Carolyn. Hey, Dave, there aren't you goes. supposed to be running the cameras? Yep. Um, there's a pretzel. There's a Hershey's. They, they're so there's cute. There's little they're pearls. Adorable. So that was from uh, viewer Lynn Wilkerson, um, and his Twitter handle is well, okay. So Dave was not Dave's actually running the cameras. Dave's too busy to actually the cameras, eating so. the cam eating the cupcakes. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be in the show notes right here at Live 108. Uh, auto trailer, auto, tra auto trails. Auto trails. <laughs> auto trails. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Yes, and I'm going to eat them all as yes, soon as the show begins. Yes, they will get devoured around begins. here. Why? I, why wait? I'm not going to wait till it's <laughs> over. Well, we um, announced something this week that I'm very, very excited about, and you guys have been asking us to get over across the pond. To the UK for a long time, and finally we're doing it. Good day, mates. That's wrong, John. We are. We told. We kind of. We kind of hinted at one of the previous on one of the previous shows yeah. that we were going to be coming, but now it's all finalized. You know all about it. If you've been watching us on Google Plus and Twitter and all that stuff, then you know she's twitter.com forward slash Callie Lewis, google.com forward slash plus Callie Lewis, <laughs> and, and I am unimportant. John Pose or google.com slash plus John P. But we are going to be going to merry old England. Merry old England. <laughs> Ye old London. We will be in London for the Future of Web Apps Conference. What which... do you want to see in London? I want to see everything. I've never been. The only reason she wants to go is because of all of you guys have those stupid British accents. Oh yeah. What's up with the chicks I love and the all accents. these British accents? They love them. <laughs> we don't have any accents. You're not even going to listen to me while we're in England no, we, because you're going to be listening to everybody uh, else. I will not be. She never listens to me anyway. <laughs> Well, if you guys, I hope you can join us for the actual conference. Uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to have fun up on stage doing the keynote. But uh, then you can go to futureofwebapps.com for that. But uh, if you can't, for some reason, we will also have a viewer meetup. So details on that soon. If you know of any cool stories we should shoot while we're there, definitely let us know. Just ping us on Twitter or Google Plus or email or whatever. What should we see while we are in the UK. I want to see that some is the really question. cool stuff. Is that broad enough for you? You can go see uh, Big Ben. Yeah, I want to see Big Ben. I hear it's not very big. It's still pretty big. That's oh. what she said. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. We've been working. We've. Been, I've been working in the garage a lot lately. You have been. I haven't been able to get you to actually do anything on the computer, like send emails, because you've been in the garage. Hey. A man's got to have a man cave. Yes, you do. And, and it's coming you closer. guys are depending on me 
to teach you how to weld yeah. and show you cool projects. It's all Here's your fault. Here's something I did that last he has night. to create a man cave. Here, see, see, look, I built all of these cabinets. There's they four don't come stainless. No, they don't. There's stainless steel cabinets that hang on the wall, and there's two big rolling ones. That would be cool. But no, no I he did not. not forge them. And then uh, uh, I hung oh, the TV well, up in the corner. you got to have a TV because while you're welding, you can't hear anything. You must anyway, have. Anyway, so you might you need to have something to be listening to. You have to have a TV. You have to have a TV. And then today, we were also working on um, the kayaks a little bit. Yes. Uh, we're out of time, but we're, we were working on the kayaks. Uh, I think, Curly, did you get a picture of the torpedo in... There's a picture of the torpedo in, in, uh, in installation installed. progress. So it's not fully I guess installed. we don't have that, but um, it is almost there. We will soon be ready to show you that. Give us more. like a week. Next week, guys, we'll show it to you. Now, we are out of time. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up on this show. But the one thing Scary that we will stuff. not be showing you Freaky is stuff. the gold iPhone. Yeah, we're not going to talk about the gold icon. No, that's not, that's not going to be on today's show. I just refuse. All right, we'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Uh -huh. Oh, so Dave finally finds the Torquedo nice. picture. Okay, there it is, mostly installed. We still have a few things to do. So the actual motor is mounted on the back of the kayak. Yes, it is. However, the and battery so and the controller and stuff are not. Than your don't, hey, kayak. don't be Don't you think, guys? What do you think? Don't, Which one looks better? Don't be uh, just, no, just what you attacking my my Franken kayak. And awesome, and I love it. It's totally geeky. It's just yours is better. Mine's better. We'll I see. I have to say. We'll see about that when we get out on the lake. How's that? Okay, I take that challenge. Okay, fine. Hey, it doesn't All right. take much creativity to write a check, Kelly. I, that's right. <laughs> it does not take much creativity to write a check. You're right. So uh, everybody's been asking me about my shirt, so I just have to say something. Yeah, tell them. The em. only reason I'm wearing this shirt is because John spent money on it in Beale Street in Memphis when he was on his road trip uh, for New York. Normally, I would not wear this shirt. Awesome. That's just for you, Vote. John. Awesome. And yes or no? Uh, today's You've been question wearing that of the day all week. is Callie's t-shirt awesome? Yes or yes? And I also gave up robots on today's show for a segment coming up next. That was very selfless of you, I have to admit. <laughs> all right, so let's get on with the news before uh, that awesomeness comes up. All right. Well, today, Steve Ballmer announced... He is going to be retiring. He's leaving. He's quitting. But it's going to take him a year to do it. What a quitter. <laughs> He's been the CEO of Microsoft since 2000 when Bill Gates quit on us. Wow. I, you know, Bill Gates quit and then Steve Ballmer quit. I don't know. Steve Jobs Ooh. died. I mean, talk about the ultimate what quitter. What is going on? Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> Too soon? Yeah. <laughs> Anytime is too soon for that one. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so it'll take him a year. He'll be phasing out and bringing people on board. You know, a couple weeks ago, we talked about how they are creating a new Microsoft and focusing on, you know, very certain things. Um, and they're kind of re you know, revamping the company itself. So he wants to put somebody in place that will... Uh, take that mission on and won't have any complications, if you will. You know, some might say that Microsoft has been struggling mightily over the last few years, and Steve Ballmer's exit is just recognition from the board of directors that Ooh. that is the case. You don't think he just wants and to And they're get trying party? to get somebody else in there who maybe has a little bit more vision, more Bill Gates, Steve Jobs-like vision to turn the company around because it's burning in its own rubble. Wow, that's a little much. Some people might say it. I didn't say it. Some people might say it. I what just, do you guys think? I just know I'm going to miss Steve sweating up on stage and running around and screaming. He is, oh, well. he is very, very animated. <laughs> um, Somebody else who is not very animated. No. Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. I don't even know Facebook. why this is news. 
Okay, well, here's the deal. So, I thought, Zuckerberg, I, I'm hearing we, noise. What am I hearing? Uh, <laughs> I can't talk. Somebody's talking. Um, <laughs> Zuckerberg is uh, launching some sort of effort to try and give all the billions of people who don't have internet cheap internet. Yet he's not doing it with balloons like Google is. He is teaming up allegedly with people like Qualcomm, Nokia, Samsung. Samsung and somebody else to launch a project called internet.org. Where they'll be dancing. Um, there will be much merriment, <laughs> rubbing of hands, and... This is their, their official video. Yeah, uh, I don't know what but that yeah. was. So, there will be standing along the sides of cliffs be, and rubbing you, of walls. It's supposed to be inspirational. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is. But here's what is for everyone sure. Everyone is trying to get everyone on the internet so that they can make more money. That's right. And that's about it. Zuckerberg thinks, you know what? There's four billion people on this planet who don't have Facebook yet. We should get them wired in. Right. And there, they actually, there's a quote on the website. Developers, mobile operators, and device manufacturers will work together to introduce business models that give people more ways to go online. That's Good luck mission. with that. You can't even get those people malaria shots, but you're going to get them internet connectivity and a tablet. I'm sure they will appreciate that while they are starving and walking 15 miles to get a glass of water. One enterprise that did make a whole lot of money. Yeah. Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Uh, Into Darkness. Good day, mates. The latest one. Obviously did very, very well at the box office. It was um, a good movie. Very good movie. I love that movie. Uh, you just I like mean, Spock. I mean, not Spock. Khan. You like the new Khan. <laughs> By the way, the new... I like all the characters. Khan is also Sherlock on the UK's right. British TV show Sherlock. Yes. He's that the is guy a good show if you who seen plays Netflix.com slash geeky. Con. Yep. So anyway, they made a lot of money at the box office, and now they're the first the first movie to release to iTunes and digital streaming before it comes out onto DVD. That's right. Which is pretty impressive. And it's brilliant. Going well. Yes. One might even say futuristic. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see more people do this, and uh, we'll be able to get stuff online first. It's like I they like finally they finally found their way, <laughs> and like, other people who have found their way. Keep going here. All of Google Maps has found their ways nice. because Google bought Waze a while back. Only it's uh, like, no, maybe like it's, two months ago or a month ago. It, it was, was not only, long ago. It was only a few weeks. And this is the fastest turnaround of a company who's bought a smaller company and the integration process that I've ever seen. This yeah. was impressive. I mean, it's not a lot of integration, but it's right. beginning. Well, now what you can do is in Google Maps, when you go to get your mm -hmm. real-time maps and stuff, you're actually going to have Waze data that's reported from real drivers in your area funneling that data into Google Maps. And yeah. if so if you're using Google Maps when you're driving around, that's good. If you're using Waze when you're driving around, you now have integration where Waze can tap into the entire Google database to show you waypoints and things like that, which, you know, they were each a little weak in those two areas, but by bringing them together, it's pretty darn awesome. It is. I can't wait now until I have my little Waze cartoonish little icon driving around inside of my Google map. Will it be an alien? Why not? Well, we are out of time. So... We're out of time? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. We are out of time, but I have to tell you about this. Uh, the government has finally unclassified some documents about Area 51. We've <sighs> always wondered, we've always thought, people have been making stories about it. Well, it is actually in existence. I thought I had more time. I know, right? Um, now they're going to find out, out though, where I really came from. That um, they actually were just testing some spy planes. It has nothing to do with aliens, they really? say. Or they're not releasing those papers. That's not what I remember, folks. <laughs> but they, yeah, they were testing some, U, uh, some aircrafts called U-2 and A-12. It's Project Oxcart. And so these aircrafts um, uh, were flying higher than normal planes would at that time, so they looked like UFOs. Mm -hmm. 
so you know how do you think they got so high started. people how do you think they got so high <laughs> we'll be right back after this commercial break before we go we want we know need to know if we you, need we need to know we need to know if you believe in aliens and well, this dude. project i mean this area 51 whole controversy go to geekbeat.tv forward slash fame spot It's my turn. Live. Hey guys, no, welcome back not. to Geek Beat Live. You, you did it last time. You started it. No, last you time. You ended the last segment. I, well, see, uh, we're, we're already fighting over this. We're about to fight over our next guest. That's right. <laughs> Steven and we, Stay, Steve Wiley. Steven and Stacy. Thank you for What's joining happening? us. You guys just launched a new Kickstarter project and already got funded and you still have 17 days to go. Yes, we do. Um, actually, the product that we're talking about today is LED Goes, because it's basically the LED version of Legos. Um, it's designed from the ground up as a building and learning platform. So you can make real things like you would with Legos, or you can take it all apart and make something totally different. So basically what we've got here is a, an LED system that I can program to say anything I want. Absolutely, and you can make it pretty much as long as you want to, too, by daisy chaining up to these boards. Yeah, you can make it just about as tall as you want to as well. So we got it set up here. It's actually communicating over the FTDI chip. You can also have it communicate over Bluetooth. Can demonstrate both of those. Can we lift this up to show the camera? Um, you'll probably disconnect it. Sure, go ahead, out, lift it up. Give it a shot. <laughs> so we actually posted up yesterday on the updates on the Kickstarter some of the preliminary board designs. Um, for the USB communicator, the Bluetooth communication communicator as well, um, and the actual wall power board, uh, those actually allow you to either run it just straight off your PC or your smartphone, um, or actually use the same interface to reprogram each of the chips. So we designed all of the partner boards as well to be dual purpose, not only for this platform, but you can use them in a lot of your other DIY projects. That's awesome. Okay, now hang on a minute, back up for a minute. <laughs> And tell me about, you said I could make it longer or taller. Yeah. How yep. do we do that? So basically, you have, as you can see, eight boards here. And if I just take that out and I can undo some of the tape. Now the tape is just because it's still a prototype, right? Yeah, totally. We don't have the back panels completely all done for these things yet. It's not quite snapping together very easily. However, as you can see, I can just remove it. No, you have the, the bottom, too. Oh, oh, yeah, the bottom. oh, yeah. You got to take <laughs> the bottom. Okay. But I see that there's pieces. You've got oh, them kind of oh, separated. Yep, there you go. Yeah, totally. So these are totally separatable pieces. You can just peel apart. And so you, know what this you can make an LED of? matrix. It's a short and What as happens long as you when want. you take them apart to what's going on on the LED? Well, it's still going on. As you can see, it's still scrolling. And so if I just go ahead and connect it, you connect it, it just gets the right one. You got number eight. There we go. Yeah. So plug in number five here. Like this. And our, our, our actual production version has. Yeah, uh, totally. So come over there in front and watch it. It'll just instantly get longer once I align that properly. There we go. There's number six. It just it just knows that it's attached and mm -hmm. it just continues Starts getting going. Bigger. Yeah, that that's like so magic. Awesome. So but you could also of... snap them together on top, so you could go taller yeah. and yeah. Yeah. certainly. So, like you could make a panel that was two feet by four feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you can control up to sixty-four of these panels off of a single single channel board. Um, and we actually have uh, software so that you can add multiples of these uh, main control boards. Oh, I was going to say, so if I ordered, like if I went on Kickstarter and supported you and bought a whole bunch mm -hmm. of these things, mm -hmm. do I get the controller with it too? And so yeah, I can so just literally, I can get them, take them, plug them all in, plug in the controller, load up the software and bang, I can go. Yep. That's exactly it, and you can Because I don't understand all that other mumbo jumbo about <laughs> addresses and everything right. else. You completely yeah. abstracted that out of the whole solution so that all you got to do is simply type in the message that you want to run across a scrolling LED matrix using the software, and it will send it over that serial port to establish the connection to, whether it be, you know, whatever you have in the middle here, it'll just go. Or I can okay, do so Bluetooth. Yeah, yes, Bluetooth, Bluetooth so we can do Wi-Fi USB. eventually, or just regular USB FTDI, even controlled through an Arduino as well if you want. So we could I, for, yeah, I could do any platforms. message? Can you do any kind of graphics or anything like that? As a matter of like fact, that? we do animations too. 
awesome. So yeah. I, I would I would create that animation and load it into the system. Right. So if you create an animation, say using After Effects or whatever your favorite animation software is, what you do is an export each frame of your animation into a bitmap file, and then you load these bitmap files. Just give the name of the directory to the software, okay. and it would then put frame by frame the bitmap onto your LED goes matrix. So awesome. we could have like a little guy running across the screen. Yeah, or yeah something. we actually, actually have a video um, of like Pac-Man ch chasing, you know. <laughs> a ghost or something. Yeah, yeah. and, and then the ghost comes ghosts. and gets him, and then he goes and he disappears. Nice. Um, mm -hmm. But it's really, uh, really simple. We made it so that you can basically get up and go, and uh, also if you want to take some time to learn how all of it works or do a, something really custom yourself, uh, it's really easy for you to do that. And even it's open custom source, so. characters mm -hmm. can be created without you having to have any programming experience. You just draw. <laughs> right. So yeah, you know, the creative use, you can put it in your car, put it in a bar and display sports scores, put it in your room and display a stock ticker. You could pretty much do anything you want to with it. Could I it sew it into the back of a leather jacket? and walk around with it. If yes, the leather the, is opaque enough. We actually have uh, enough, battery power boards, and because we also allow you to control it through your smartphone, um, iOS and Android are part of the first standard distributions. We're trying to get, uh, maybe if we have time, we'll do Windows Phone, because um, <laughs> we've both done those before. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you can absolutely do that. Uh, awesome. And we're actually going to be doing different versions Mentis wearables and RGB stuff and things like that, Hence, but with the same, the same ease of use, the same ease of, all I have to do is snap yeah. it together and I, I don't have to worry about it. I just wrote a new message into the raw text tab, and all I have to do is hit push, the button right there, and then next time it's done with the first message, it'll actually print out that new message, which says here's a different message, in green. Oh, wow. Oh, there's multiple colors. Definitely. How oh, many yeah. colors are there? It does red, green. When you put them together, it'll do yellow. Uh, nice. So nice. eventually we do want to try to find a cheap little uh, RGB board to go yeah. along with these things and do the whole color spectrum. Do the whole thing. Yeah, PWM controlled. Oh, and just for the record, this nice little piece. second one right there, this is a prototype. We've been through a lot of things. Oh, I'm sure. There's, you know, and of course, I soldered some of them, which means some of them <laughs> are no good. <laughs> well, yeah. but that's why I you have a, a lot of the project <laughs> so <laughs> that you can put it into better manufacturing. Totally. So that's totally understandable for this audience. Over here, what kind of uh, options sure. we have? So on the software, you can control the baud rate that you're communicating to the board with, and that kind of at this point just controls how fast it scrolls. Then. You pick a COM port, and one of these is Bluetooth. The other one is FTDI. Right now, COM12 is my FTDI. If I were now, to now, what if somebody get, were to get this and don't doesn't know what a COM port is? Um, actually, you can go to your device manager on Windows, and actually, it'll tell you which COM port your thing is. So if you're, it says USB serial, that and it tells you what your COM port is. If you're using Mac or Linux, you can actually look at your dev slash dev TTY ports, and uh, it'll be like TTY USB zero. And or, since we're and just awesome developers, and you'll have we like can a probably just roll that into the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 auto recognition right. is pretty easy to put in. Yeah. Right? And mind you guys, this is actually running at about a third brightness because we're just running it off the USB. Um, if you actually run it off the wall power boards or the battery it's a lot power brighter. boards, it's mm -hmm. a lot brighter. Makes yep. sense. So I just hit connect. On the Bluetooth, and there it is coming through the Bluetooth, too. You can see it's spitting all the data out yeah. with that little blinky light down there. Nice. And mm -hmm. we can uh, feed a Twitter, uh, like if somebody were to tweet it, can can mm -hmm. we do that? Certainly. So, oh, I'll go ahead and let you. what yeah, is the Twitter talking. handle? Wait, if somebody tweeted, that thing could show the tweet messages? It'll show yeah. live tweets. It's, it does That's live another tweeting. use case. That would be fantastic. All right, what, well, what, well, how would you do that? What Twitter, you, you mean like you're going to watch for some kind of Twitter thing? Mm -hmm. Like if people were to tweet at GeekBeat TV right now, mm -hmm. theoretically, it could show up there? Yep. Yes. So, uh, so you've mentioned a few use cases. So like for somebody watching this, um, stock, stock rooms or... Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of Weather office updates, message, news updates. News actually, updates. Um, they actually want to put it up in my office yeah. uh, to actually show how, what the server statuses are, what what's going on, who, what machines are down, what stuff's broadcasting, uh, so that you can actually see okay. from somewhere around the office because we can we actually have pillars throughout the office. Now, this is the only solution that allows you to curve it, curve it, yeah. to make it. 
uh, so that it's visible to everybody. That is so cool. And I love can, how modular yeah. they are and how easy it looks like everything is. Um, you guys have gone through great lengths to make that easy. So mm -hmm. um, kudos to you on that. How now, long do we have on the Kickstarter? How long is left? 17 days. 17 days. 17 days. And people can find it at? Uh, ledghost.com or uh, on uh, Kickstarter slash ledghost. But, but before yep. we wrap up, yes. there's one other important piece of information here which is you guys will be manufacturing this right here in dallas mm -hmm. yes american made <laughs> Texan designed, made designed and built in uh the dallas fort worth area we're talking even the pcbs all of the pcb production um all of the shipping and fulfillment's done directly here uh the same thing with the shirts the sh the shirts are designed and printed right here in dallas awesome. um so all right, well, that is ledgoes.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This was fantastic to see. I love it. Yep. Thank you. All right, All right. stay tuned, guys. We're going to be right back after we take a quick commercial break. Hey, folks, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. We're back on the main set. We are. That's amazing, Callie Lewis. Amazing how uh, we switch places like that. The magic of television. That's John P. And we've got some gadgets for you. I know we just looked at some gadgets, but a couple more things. We've got even more gadgets. Like Lego. That's right. A lot of Legos. Legos to follow. To <laughs> no, follow it's not Legos. L -E -D -Gos. You're right. Wow. Nice. I like it. All right, so um, a school district in Delaware, of all places, um, built a Lego tower that set records. Look at this thing. What the? How tall is that? This is um, 10, 106 feet, actually. 106? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is 11 just stories. Just under 11, 113 feet. Oh, wow which the previous record was 106 feet. Wow, and they used half a million Lego bricks in its construction? Yes. How much did that cost? I oh, don't and it know says, if you can call it a tower if it's being supported by like cables galore, but... Oh, was it? It says that they used <laughs> no adhesives. It took just, it took several months to build it. It's crazy. And it was erected by Crane on Monday the 19th and dismantled on Thursday the 22nd. <laughs> and of course, each member of the classroom who were participating in this will get a piece of it to take home. Nice. I want to know how much that costs. I know. That's Half ridiculous. A million Do you think Lego Legos. actually gave it? Like, no, there's no way them? Lego gave them to them. I don't know. We didn't see, we didn't find that they information. They must have just had everybody donate Legos to them Can until you they had so many Legos. <laughs> like Where would a, you even store them? As opposed to like, can you fund this or that or buy Girl Scout cookies? You're like, we're trying to buy Legos. <laughs> we need Legos. Just bring your Legos. It's not Legos. Lego is singular and plural. Bring your Legos. Don't go correcting me on my Everyone use of else corrects Legos. me when I say Legos, so I just They're Legos, I'd pass people. It on. They are Legos. There's right. more than one. They're Legos. I don't care what Lego tells you. Don't buy into that corporate <laughs> bull beep. Beat me, Dave. Don't buy into the corporate bull. <gasps> oh. uh, John. Dave, you missed the beep. Oh, oh, hang on. John. Anyway, Boop. don't uh, buy into it. All right. They're, they're called Legos. What you can buy into, actually, no, you can't buy into it because it is just a concept, is a printer that eats your paper. Eats paper. Yeah. Like you take a stack of paper, just undo the ream and put it on the the, uh, the table, this and then awesome. just put the printer on top of it, and it'll eat through that stack of paper. I love this concept. It just pulls out the sheet, prints it, and spits it out at you. Now, Dave asked earlier how many sheets it can print without falling over because it's going to be toppled on top. This is not for like printing four thousand sheets of paper. This is for like regular office printing, just Look, little bits here and there. It was just some Japanese guy named Mugi, <laughs> Mugi Yamamoto, who decided he was going to get clever and invent something cool. I think it it's awesome. really cool. It'll never see the light of day, No. but it's awesome nonetheless. You know what else is awesome? Augmented reality. Especially when it's in your table. 
And not only in your table, because we've seen kind of augmented reality stuff in tables, but this one is actually talking to like a secondary monitor kind of, well, I mean, well, you mean it uses some it's... magical wireless type of technology? Right. Like Bluetooth? Right. Anyway, yeah, look at this. So see how he's actually, this is actually a projector above him. You can see it on his hands. They are using a Canon projector, a Kinect sensor, and then the video wall system is a Planar uh, system, and then custom software. So That's the future. That is the future. You're looking at the future, people. I hope to see this in more use cases. But for now, it's just in one building. Is that it? That's, That's it. Okay. Just we're in moving, some office lobby. We're moving on to science. Okay. The I first like story is all about plants versus zombies. No, it's not. It's not? No. Oh, okay. But it is about planets. Oh, planets. <laughs> planets versus zombies. I'm sorry. So, okay. You know, we all used to think that the Earth was flat, right? Well, we it's also not. no. You need a little history lesson. Um, <laughs> we also used to think that planets that lived on their own, that didn't have a solar system, were used to be a part of a solar system and got kicked out for one reason or another. Well, now it turns out that that is not true. Just like the fact that the Earth is round. I got kicked out. <laughs> So um, they have discovered, scientists have discovered, that um, planets can basically just become. Spontaneously exist? Spontaneously exist. Don't they just spawn themselves from nebulae? Yes. They figured this out when um, planet CFB DSIRJ2149 became into existence. What about 2148? I don't know what happened to 2148. See, 2148 <laughs> never gets any attention. Why do they name a, the, what the heck is that? Anyway, so what happens is this is the nearest, uh, Sibiter 2149 <laughs> is the nearest free-floating planet that we know of, and they think that it came from globulets. Yes, they're very dense, um, kind of Nebula. matter, and um, can collapse on themselves and then become a planet. So very cool. Anyway. Much like Steve Ballmer did. Something I would like, a drug that means I don't have to ever work out again. Yeah, you're pretty sore right now. You're, you're kind of <laughs> slouching and stuff, and you know all that. I've been hit the gym that. hard, and so yeah, yeah I would like uh, something that would make. I mean, just so I can just sit and relax. I want this too. Let me tell you about it. The Scripps Research Institute, a researcher named Tom, Thomas Burris, mm -hmm. Thomas Burris, is developing you want a to drug. Say his name again? He's got a drug called SR nine thousand nine. Yeah. And what happens I hope is, it gets I name. kid you not. I don't want to take SR909. I kid you not. It's a pill. It looks like this. At least in its chemical form. <laughs> and what happened is, they injected some mice with this chemical. Guess what? They got huge. They pumped you up. They look so, like Arnold Schwarzenegger mice. I know this sounds like steroids, but this particular drug wouldn't be dangerous. It's better than like steroids. Steroids, and it's more effective. So it would be able to basically give you a lot more um, uh, efficiency without exercising and be able to let you run Let's faster be clear. and more. Let's be clear what happened here, okay? They took a pill. They're... They swole up like their muscles got big as if they had been working out. They did all the chemical mm -hmm. testing and, Do you know, rats work out? doctory kind of stuff. And they said if these mice had been working out, they would have gotten the same kind of muscles as they got from that pill. And so now they're saying maybe they could make a similar pill for humans. And now all I can think of is flash forward like 10 or 15 years. Every human looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now what are you going to do? They're going to look like He-Man. Every one of us is going to look like that. How are you going to pick your movie stars, well, people? Well, every, every... Everyone is going to have a six-pack of abs. Everyone is. We can eat all the McDonald's you want because be you just take more pills and you swell up even bigger. What are you going to do? 
I don't know what to say to that. Ken John. has been telling me we're over time. Like, well, then we need to go to commercial break because Ken is is trying to help us manage this time. But before we go, you still haven't told us whether or not you believe aliens exist. It's an easy question, do you or don't you? Just leave us a fame spot at geekbeat.tv slash fame spot, 15 second video, that's all we need from you. Do it right now. Hey guys, welcome back to Geek Beat Live, I'm Callie. I'm John P. And as I said earlier, I did give up my robot. There segments. are no robots on today's show. It's time for planes, trains, and automobiles. But maybe I could find No a way. robots on today's show. It's time for planes, trains, and automobiles. And our first planes, trains, and automobiles story of the day. Do you have like a robotic car? No. Tesla. You know Tesla, the ones yeah, who make of electric I know cars? Tesla. Everybody knows Tesla. Guess who makes the safest car in the universe of all time? Tesla. Not Volvo, Tesla. Wow. That's right. The Tesla Model S, which is the four door, sporty, like zero to 60 in four second, ridiculous 250 mile, bang. Oh God, I can't believe they did that to that car. They always do that to those cars. Why do they do that to those cars? So then anyway, you can have a news story that says they are the safest. Here's the deal. The National Highway Te Safety Test Agency recently tested the safest car ever tested, and it was the Tesla Motor Model S. Nice. It scored so a that when you're going so fast as it can, that's then right. you aren't going it to stop. It's because it's got a giant battery right there that's, that's stopping right. it all. That's right. <laughs> It scored a total score of 5.4 stars, which is the highest ever in the roof crush test. Do we have one where it shows the roof crush test? Let me look. In the roof crush test, it broke the testing machine at over Whoa. four times the car's weight. Wait, I'm how, not sure. How does ben, it break? Did you mess up the notes? Did it really <laughs> break the testing machine or did it break the record? Yeah. It broke the machine? Yeah, I read it. How? That is awesome. How does it break the machine? <laughs> the machine was not strong enough to crush the car. Wow. The score comes after rigorous development by Tesla, where they would test the design for weaknesses and all that stuff. So Impressive. Anyway, Congratulations, Tesla. Said, yep, it broke the machine. It may not get you from... New York to wherever. But oh, you're thinking about that one journalist who they claim stopped all over the place and then lied about what they did. It got like a 250 I, mile an hour. 250 I mile joke, range. I joke. Well, I did have one on order for you, but I'm canceling it. <laughs> so. Just give me the cash instead. Instead, I'm going to get you one of these. It's a folding electric car. What do you mean? That's, I'm going to get you one folding. of these. Folding. Here's what I mean. Oh, it's You're, tiny. It's, That's cute. Yeah, it's so cute. It's called the Armadillo. Armadillo, It's huh? literally called the Armadillo T. But it's not from Texas? Once parked, the rear end of the car folds up and over Look, the front whoa. of the car. A little set of casters coming down. Reducing its length from nine foot two <laughs> to five foot four. Oh, my gosh. How about that? Wow, so we could park this, uh, like uh, parallel park this, and then just shrink right. the amount of space that we take. You could. It, the car is all How much electric. will it actually carry? And what if you have something in the back? Will it like fall down into the driver's I'm seat? I'm not done telling you about it. It has a 62-mile range with a 10-minute charge. But I'm still curious you about me? if you have any groceries in the back. 10-minute charge, 62-mile range. That is impressive. They do have one, it's also, it only has a 37 mile an hour top speed. There's only one little issue, which is there's no safety sensor in the back of the vehicle. So if a human's in there and it crushes, it just crushes them and the, the jelly just comes right out the door. <laughs> the jelly. The, jelly yeah. the human ooze is that comes what we're out it? the back of the jelly? door. Jelly? That's stuff from inside the cupcake. I may yeah. or may not have made up that last part of the story. You'll oh. have to try it and find out. <laughs> Go ahead. We have one more story, wow. and I have one more minute to tell you about the F-35B's first flight, I mean first night landing oh. 
on an aircraft carrier. Is this a big deal? This is the Lockheed Martin F-35B, B, which is a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. Here you see it taking off from the aircraft carrier, and then it swings back around, and it's coming in for a VTOL landing on the USS Wasp, which is an assault ship. Look at so it, So we, we it already, touchdown. whoa, that was a little that rough. Is, for any airplane, a, a uh, aircraft carrier landing is the most dangerous kind of landing. Right, because, because everything is moving the at the same time. The damn thing's moving and the sea's going like this yep. and you gotta come in and hook it and all that. But in the only thing harder is doing it at night. Nice. And they did it with well, the VTOL. congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. All right. Oh, well, and it I is should, time for us wait, to go to commercial break. It was piloted by a U.S. Marine pilot. Of just, course. Just for the record. Course. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be right back after these messages. Do you believe in plants versus zombies? No, that's not the question. Do you believe in aliens? If so, go to geekbeat.tv forward slash fame spot and let us know. If you don't... Whoa. Well... <laughs> Welcome back to Geek Beat Live, people! I am your sidekick, John P, and she is your fabulous, gorgeous host, Callie Lewis. What do you want, John? I want to open the big package today. Oh, okay, I see. Is but, there a robot in there? No, but for now, we have a very special package. Yes, we that do. Has come to from us. somebody I recognize. From Jason Wynn, who we have met. Jaybird in the chat room. That is right. Look at this. What do we have? He sent over a photo collage. It's like a collage, yeah. This is to go on the geek beat on the wall. There's this a is to go on our wall. Message here. Yes, Aww. it is very Whoa. long. It is very long. And detailed, <laughs> and is just for our eyes. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. Cool. And here's, oh, here's all of us. Here's Jason. Hanging out. That was in Las Vegas, Yeah. if I recall. If I, I do so. recall, that was near the Earl of Sandwich, maybe? Perhaps. In the Earl of Sandwich? I thought so. <laughs> That's what I thought. Thank you so much. As you know, uh, anytime you send us a... Uh, Video, I mean, uh, not a video, a picture or uh, a, letter. a postcard or a letter or anything. It goes on, on our viewer wall of fame That's out right. in the lobby. That's Thank where that you. will go. Do you want to open this box? Of course I do. Open it. Actually, do you want to open this bag? It is a bag. It's not a box, it's a bag. Ah. Do you need a knife? Ah. Oh, got it. I just sharpened my knife and then I cut my finger. Can you see that, Pablo? Whoa, you cut yourself? Look, I cut my <gasps> finger. Ooh, ooh, Can you see right there? Ooh, I cut ooh. my finger. Ooh, ooh, open this. I really did. Oh, open that. Sorry. Okay. This is wireless charging from Promate. Oh wow! Okay, so wireless charging. I, you know, there are a lot of different devices that do that. You usually have to have a special case in order to do that. There is a case. This is awesome. That will do wireless charging for S4. I'm sure they have other options. Wireless charging for what? For the S4. Why for, didn't you? I'm the one with the S4. Why don't I have a Note 2? I am the one with the S4. Wireless charger. That looks like um, the base for just setting. Basically, you can just set your phone oh, on. Oh, this is this is awesome. All right, so you put that on your phone, on your S4. Put this on the S4. What other options do they have, guys? Just this. This tiny little thing goes. Yes. On. Oh, it snaps on. This it is actually on. the back of an S4. Yes. Yeah. It's not a case. It's just well, the. Yeah, it's just the back. Just a friggin' back, and it has two little, like, you see those little metal things there? Yep. They're like little metal conductory things. Yeah. And then so when you I just lay it, it on here. You just lay it on there. And maybe, maybe they can find one for the Galaxy Note. Okay, moving right along. Uh, here's another box. Just, I will let you open you this open box for one. a consolation prize. Okay. <laughs> this is stuff that oh. is going to get Ken's juices Ken, flowing. Ken, you're going to like this. Uh, this is a lapel mic that actually plugs into the iPhone. No way. Yeah. The Smart Lab How much is this? from Rode. Okay, you guys, Smart Lab. From Rode. How much is it? This is actually Look a bunch of stuff from Rode. Tell me how much it is. Broadcast oh, is quality awesome. audio directly from your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. Look at the XY. That's awesome. 
It says pair it with the Rode Rec app, like a Rode recording app or something, I guess. And I know another thing that Ken will like is this iXY. It also goes into the iPhone and uh, it gives you the higher quality, you know, uh, recording capabilities. Very cool. I, these are awesome. So this is just like a lav mic huh, with a huh. uh, three and a half millimeter jack on the yeah. end. I'll be very curious. Kim's how, really good at testing the audio things. So I'll be curious to see with, how this thing sounds. With people with audio, um, or one of the biggest problems with like mobile video is that the audio sucks. So what that do you got? Could, this is awesome, actually. This is funny. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a dead kitten. No, so the dead cat is what um, the wind muffs are that go on big mics. But this is a little one. I guess meant for this maybe. It's like a little baby dead cat. And so they and call, so it, they a call dead it the kitten. dead kitten. You put it How over. How cute is that? You you put it. Oh, it's got oh, wait, a stretchy thing. Oh, you put I'm sorry. It over it's a microphone. Yeah, it's for the NT4 and the stereo video mic. Okay, yeah. That's so cute. Very cool. It, it also reminds me of one of those little troll dolls. Do you remember those yeah. little troll dolls yeah. they used to have? Everybody the little used hairy to. things? It's like a All little right. troll doll. We have it's one just more. The, the troll doll got a haircut. That's how they come up with those. Troll got a haircut. No, we actually have two more. Oh, we have two here's more? Here's one more, and here's one more. Something from Sharp. From Sharp. Okay. Don't Spoiler you like how we just alert. throw things around? It's not a TV, but it's nice. still good. But it's still good. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Oh. It says open your holiday gift. I like it when the holidays come really early. Yeah, the, they oh. say no two snowflakes are alike. Popcorn. I think I think that's been claimed already. Dave. Yeah, Dave will want that. It's caramel corn, not just popcorn. And uh, touch gloves. For ah, the winter. Because it's for the winter. Ooh. So I see what this is. It's a PR package. They're announcing the Aquos 4K Ultra <gasps> HD LED oh, television. Yeah. It says on the back here, it, the MSRP is going to be basically 8,000 bucks. That's coming out. So that was a good way to... Um, get our attention. Get our attention. That's cute. And now okay. I get to open, as promised, the big box because I peaked earlier. That's right, oh. I cheated. And I don't even care. <gasps> and, look then at, you, and then you tried to suck up to me. I did. What is it? What's so exciting? Come on! No, Dave. The answer is no. Yes, I plan to The Come answer on. is no. Yes. These yes. are the Kef M500 headphones. Nice. Read them and weep. Read them and weep. You love your Kef speakers. Uh, I really do. It's funny because a couple years ago, I didn't even know who Kef was. And now all of a sudden, I'm surrounded by Kef. Well, they make and very I love good it. products. They, their quality is spectacular they're, from everything that we've tested so far. They kind of are house brand now. They kind yeah. of are. And so these are a brand. Kef did, never, made, never made earphones, you know, headphones before. This is their first foray oh, into the them. Oh, first. Yes. So we're wow, going to... They've packaged it well. Yeah. They don't want it opening on accident. Open this little bad boy here. Oh, here we go. Ah. Oh, oh check it out. Black. There's a nice case. Wow. First of all, it's kind of a half-sized case, which tells me these things are folding. Yeah. And that's good because when you travel with these you things, want you want them as small case. as they can be. All right, let's open it up here. There we go. They look really they nice. Do. Oh my wow, God, they, they look soft. Feel nice. That is aluminum wow. with leather ear pads. Oh. <laughs> Dave is. Uh... I don't want to tell you what Dave is doing <laughs> over there. Okay, it doesn't sound good. Let's see. Do they feel good though? Oh wow. I'm not kidding. They feel good. Yeah. Ken's giving us the wrap it up All signal, right. but these, wow. here, well, try them on. We will be, uh, Try them on. Okay. Who's working the TriCaster, yeah. Dave? I want some. <laughs> I want some. Okay, Dave, go, go some. take these over and work some. the cameras. <laughs> All right, guys, Thanks. I guess we've got to wrap it up, and I've got to go get the headphones back from Dave. <laughs> so, we'll see you next week. Ken might have to work the TriCaster, I don't know. Bye, guys. See you later.